How'd your painting go? It was good. It, I, we, it, I need to get used to hearing my voice. This is throwing <laughs> me off at first. We're doing uh, your mixtape after this. Yeah, good. <laughs> it went um, super quick. It was just like one of my black and white women's faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked good. I saw it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I have that down to just like... Like, I don't know. I feel like I should just only do those faces. I can do them so fast. Mm. Do people hit you up these days or is it you reaching out to a lot of people or how are you finding your stuff? I've reached out. I've tried that game and it's never worked for me. Same. So I, yeah, I just stopped and people just reach out. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is about art, dude. Um, I don't know. People just, uh, when, I mean, artists are always fighting for like the next job, you know? So it's like, when I was first starting with photography, it was like, dude, I was reaching out to anyone and everyone to like shoot brands, people, anything. And no, one, no one gets back to you or they just say they don't, they aren't interested right now. And it's like, they, they need to seek you out and have like an idea in mind. Mm -hmm. They're not just a willy nilly. You're going to throw you some cash. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a luxury thing. Right. Yeah. There's been a lot of walls that I'd be like driving past like old buildings mm. that like, Somebody probably owns, but they don't give a damn about. I've thought about like photographing it, getting a design from, yeah, and then reaching out to them, being like, "I can do this for super cheap. Just like let me paint sure, that wall sure, because, sure. and like have it already Just tag done." It up. Yeah, there's I think a, people there's a need fine to see line it. between graffiti and what you're doing too. <laughs> have you ever? <laughs> did you thick start? Line. You should have seen. There's a thick line. <laughs> did you start like? Uh, I assume you started small, obviously, but what? What? When did you get to that? that point where you're like fuck it let's do some big ass walls dude oh i mean i kind of had a weird creation story my mom's a mirrorless too oh yeah so when i grew up she she did a lot of like the decorative painting in houses so she'd do like these like landscapes and stuff in houses so i helped her and oh, i got nice. comfortable with like approaching large areas and painting yeah which that's its own like that's its own story sure, it's yeah. really intimidating like, i'm not you just like, you know, putting your mark on walls is like... Was your mom drawing think. naked women too? No, no, that was not my as, own. Not as many. <laughs> yeah, that was me, I think. Um, I grew up in a really... My work isn't so much as a protest. It's never felt like a protest. Sure. Um, but I grew up in a very um, conservative environment in the country in Northern Idaho. Mm -hmm. So I think when I was finally able to just like paint anything i just wanted to paint like tits and yeah. like women loving their bodies and just like and i didn't want it, them to be covered in clothes and um i just find like it's just a whole different you lose that old art like mm. the um it becomes like human when once they're just like have clothes on yeah like i love like nude yeah, women it, it kind of dates it immediately too it dates it for sure and it's like takes away the like divinity of just like the idea of like the shape of bodies. I still haven't quite figured out how to articulate exactly why I don't like clothes, but. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had actually had uh, some naked dude posing for you for like three hours? I've never done the live. Yeah. For one, because it's like really hard to find somebody to pose for you. Yeah, just take a photo. and Take a photo. <laughs> and I think there's something really special about like painting somebody in real time. Like there's its own argument for why that's really sure. great. And I agree. But also photographs, you can you can like grab that in between moment where they're not posing, mm -hmm. like that. Because my favorite photographs are the, like right in between a pose when your hands relax and you forget that you're. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something I found. Just a candid vibe. Candid vibe. Did you ever Free. you ever do any photography? Yeah. Yeah. When I was young, I was like, I had a oh, camera. Yeah, you were telling me, dude. Time. Why did you fall out of that? Well couple reasons for one i got so obsessed with it capturing everything that i started to get really everything had to be viewed through a lens yeah and i started getting really anxious like if i saw like a flock of birds fly by it was like Bleh! and i grabbed trying to find my camera and then you have to find like the right exposure and everything and you miss it and you're like fuck so like i couldn't appreciate uh -huh. it took me out of the moment which is funny it's like the opposite you know you're mm -hmm. with a, a photographer's eye you're always like in it and trying to find the beautiful things in every moment but then I became so obsessed with capturing it all, putting a frame around it, put a frame around it. Were you shooting on film? Oh, um, digital. Yeah. I'm not cool. Well, I think, well, I think that's the thing when you're shooting on digital, it's like, you, it's easier to capture the moment where you can just, 
yeah. and capture the whole moment. <laughs> and but when it, yeah, so it's like it's like you feel um when you're when you're shooting on film, it's like you're more willing to let that moment go a little bit because you knew you wouldn't have gotten the shot off. Mm, you know? It's yeah. like it's gone and it's like already fading away and you're like i'm not even gonna bother taking out my camera <laughs> you know and i and i think that's i mean that's the beauty of all art forms they're all like um they're all like temporary other people decide that for you obviously as an artist too mm-hmm. and i think that's a good thing about what you're doing too it's like you're making a statement with every piece and it's like, it's going to be, no one's going to write over your wall. If anything, they're going to ask you to come make over a new mural. They might. Do they, People yeah. tag everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, tagging. Fuck those guys, dude. <laughs> when they just show up with a shitty little logo. A friend of mine once said, once called like all the tagging, the graffiti in a city, the vines of a, of a city. Yeah. Like the way that the vines kind of crawl over things over mm-hmm. time. He, like, that's so good. I loved that. Do you shoot in film? I was going to ask you. Yeah really yeah that's all i shoot on whoa it's a bunch of my film right there your stuff's so good <laughs> I, I was looking through it i was like god damn <laughs> we should shoot later yeah i'd love that let's do it Very cool. i didn't get into it until the pandemic happened and um it was like whoa well i was doing like some digital stuff but i just didn't like anything i was doing and it's the same thing like you found like big big walls were like your canvas and kind of your instrument in its own way. Like it wasn't until I found my, my specific film camera that like you clicked with a specific angle on that art form that really like resonated with you, Mm. at least with me. And um, yeah, I actually like started liking what I was doing. And then, and then that's how it snowballs with like, you have to like your art for you to keep pursuing the art, you know? If you don't like how you're performing, and that's what discourages a lot of people too, is that when they suck at something for however long, they they start to fade interest. Mm -hmm. And it might not even be bad, but in their eyes, they think it's bad, you know? And that's like the hurdle artists need to- Quit comparing yourself. Yeah, exactly, dude. You hear that a lot, but it's like- It's hard not to. Repeat it until it really sinks (laughs) in because- you will be forever unsatisfied. Totally, dude. If you're comparing yourself, because you're you're also comparing yourself to the people, like the influence influences that made you even jump into that art form in the first place. You know, mm. like the greats that came before you, <laughs> like the Beatles, dude. Like, I think of so much of their music as like the reason I started playing instruments. I was gonna ask you. I hear Beatles, yeah, in your music. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I like that, but it's like. But I'm not the only one. Like, how many artists respond from them, you know? And I think that's the beauty of just, like, cre- creating in general. It's like, you, you, if you create something, odds are you're going to influence someone. And whether it's subconsciously, um, or, the, or they might even fucking message you. and like, hey, like, you are a reason I'm drawing today. You know? Has anyone ever said that to you? Yeah. Yeah. That shit makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yeah. I love that, dude. Yeah, that was... um... (laughs) It just keeps you going, you know? Yeah, it is. You know, like a lot of celebrities, they hate doing autographs or when people come up to them in the street and say shit like, hey, like, can I get a selfie with you or something? And they're like, fuck you, I'm I'm going to lunch or something. Mm -hmm. And it's like the reason they do that is because they're bombarded with it constantly Mm -hmm. and but when it's like when i was in my last band chicago like this is a rare thing but like every once in a while like someone would like notice me or like come up to me and like say hey dude like i love your music or like i'm a fan of your stuff and like that i love that shit and i would like talk to them and like try and make a little friend out of the situation and and that and And that's why I make stuff is for other people. Like, obviously it's for me in its own way, but like you share everything you do. It's not like you lock it up and wherever you go do it. And then you never post it or something like you. There's a lot of that too. (laughs) I'm sure there is, you know? And um, yeah, we keep some stuff in here because we don't want it all out there. Yeah. But yeah, we want people to see 
our work. I think like that attitude of being irritable be because of like the what's it called when something is repetitive? Monotonous. Monotony. I don't like monotony personally, but I find myself really pushing back on it when I'm tired. Mm. And um, you also, get, you get cranky after you you paint. Oh, I don't get cranky very often. I do. I do when I'm really tired, though. You know, that's just like yeah. I that's don't like myself do, when dude. I'm tired. I just like become cynical and um, like, uninspired. You like overanalyze your work. I get analytical too, and I yeah. judge myself. I just don't like the tired mind. Mm -hmm. That's when I gotta go to sleep. Yeah, but no, not I. I don't get cranky after I paint. I um kind of lose my ability to talk, though. I mentioned that to you. Yeah, I don't. I think it's because I'm in my head all day listening to music, or mm -hmm. or I'm like thinking in color and shape and composition, and not like words your brain's in just a different, different mode spot. Yeah. yeah that's interesting dude i overshare too and i mean <laughs> do you listen to music while you play while you draw oh i'll or paint whatever yeah music and podcasts and books but i actually listened to i started recently listening to just jazz fucking jazz <laughs> no i jazz. do like i like just smooth jazz <laughs> I listened to just cello. I, I found this oh. like, I, it's weird. I found this whole playlist of um, it's for tuning your cello. And what it is is just one note. Some guy for breaking like strings. Yeah, for like eight minutes. Whoa. So it's just like, for like. I don't know if I'd like that. Oh, it sounds weird. But it is weird. <laughs> <laughs> sounds weird and it is. <laughs> but it's so calming to me. Like, yeah. and I'll just play that for hours and hours. Just mm. you aren't listening to like Skrillex or anything, huh? I don't like Skrillex. I <laughs> like metal. I love metal. Do you? I do. Wow. Was your dad like listening to that growing up, or? My dad listened to um, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. <laughs> Hell yeah. In fact, Diamonds and Rust by Judas Priest, Sick, specifically dude. from Unleashed in the East mm -hmm. album, Love <laughs> Live, is one of my favorite songs ever. Hell yeah. But my brother listened to metal. Mm. So I was into it probably before anything else. Mm -hmm. It was Pink Floyd and then like these ridiculous like new metal bands like Fear Factory and shit when I was like I love it. 11. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I, yeah, I don't know why I liked it so much. Well, there's something um, there's something about music that you listen to when you're a kid that just like you will always love, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know like why that is. It's just like things nostalgia. that you, yeah, nostalgia is like what it boils down to. But like, I don't know what, what it is about experiences when you're a kid that, um, that you can keep tapping into as an adult that lets you i don't know come get back into that spirit i don't know yeah i mean if you had a good childhood <laughs> yeah. you'd probably if you're a bad childhood you probably wouldn't like that it's, but it's all good and bad you know i yeah uh, i love i love the feeling of going back um to my childhood i had a great childhood when it did, was very free when did you leave idaho when i was 18 right when i graduated high oh school. yeah yeah the second i can work i worked 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 and saved and saved and then i graduated and i went pew. <laughs> Southeast the, to Asia. the moon to the moon oh, oh, oh to asia i went to southeast asia first whoa vietnam cambodia Laos, and thailand what were you doing there oh, i th i thought i was gonna go and meditate i was like <sighs> i'm gonna go to the i don't know i you know you, ha you have these ideas in your head i'm like i'm yeah. gonna go and become a monk become a monk and find myself but no i just partied Fucking mm -hmm. lost my oh, virginity. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> As Is you that do. was that where you did all your little psychedelic trips and whatnot? No, no, I didn't do um man, I was so afraid of my mind. I was so afraid of drugs for so long. I think I was like twenty one before I even like Did you have those considered... dare programs in school when you were a kid? Yeah. 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 Classic. Dare. dare. dare I don't even know too. what that was that Stanford, you know? Um I don't know. It stands for something. Drugs, alcohol, maybe. D do all recreational <laughs> <laughs> I <don't> know, experiments. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can't even think of anything. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, the drug thing, I was, a, I definitely grew up like, I will never do drugs. You know, like, like that's kind Same. of, it's kind of ingrained in you mm -hmm. for some, you know, your parents don't want, 
I think most parents don't want their dr- their kids doing all the drugs under the sun. That's so scary. For yeah. As a <laughs> yeah, I would I would be I'll be scared when my yeah. kids. Yeah, right. But it's like it's also, you know, I I think if anything, I want my kid to do all the drugs after he turns eighteen, and maybe not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. You know, like I'll take off a few, but yeah. um. There's definitely some that I think obviously marijuana is like just some things so you can yeah explore your brain a little bit socialize with some people um again like I haven't done a lot of psychedelics I'll be honest with you but I, I still still want to and I keep saying that but um I just know how much they change some people for the better mm you know, mm-hmm. what have you, what have you done lately? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's so funny that you asked me to be on this podcast. Cause yeah, it's like sex, drugs and bad advice, but I'm like, was celibate when you asked me to celibate and mm-hmm. not and sober, not yeah. doing any drugs. I'm like, Oh, sweet. Dude. Of all the times to be asked to be on this. Um, <laughs> what would you ask me? What have I done recently? Yeah. Have you done any? Oh, I mean the last, I don't even know. No. Yeah. I, for a while i was really i have i'm a very curious person i'm curious to experience all types of lives and mindsets and um environments just as a means of like just seeing more being able to be a better like messenger as an Mm -hmm. artist you know yeah um but i realized that the the drugs have me um it was interesting and i learned a lot but they make me hyper analytical of me in um in space like i'm looking back on myself a lot where like which ones which drugs I, this is like recorded oh. i'm terrified to talk oh, about okay you. okay, okay. <laughs> i got you you don't have to dive into that <laughs> not not the really hard drugs yeah yeah, yeah. the like kind S- of some fuzzy <laughs> ones yeah the fun ones the fun ones yeah, yeah. the not like <laughs> crawled up in a doorway ones um <laughs> But I find that, like, my mind is just the same sober. Mm. And, like, I was just, like, curious, you know? Um, and I, and anything that intimidates me, I'm kind of, like, have this inclination to learn about or dive into more. Mm-hmm. And a lot of drugs just scared the shit out of me. So yeah. I'm like, well, I guess we'll just figure it out then. Sure. We'll dive in and see what it's like. But, yeah, I find that um, I love my mind my sober self, I, I can still like access the, um, the places that you do like on acid, mm-hmm. Molly, you know, that if you ever had a gallery, I would take so much acid before I went. I've heard that so many times, you know, <laughs> <laughs> people assume I do so many drugs and it's like, I do far less than people expect. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I'd make anything of substance when I'm intoxicated mm-hmm. in any way. Mm-hmm. I think some artists do. You know, some make their best shit when they're fucked out of their minds, you know? Yeah. That's a, I, it's hard to... It's not a good thing to get into a habit of. I don't oh, think. for sure. You know, where you need to be, like, drunk or yeah, whatever. Well, music, it's like... Music, while, like, like whiskey and cocaine and uh-huh. making music is just, like... I don't know. Well, a lot of... You know, music is a funny thing because it's a language, mm-hmm. you know? And... um it's almost like muscle memory for a lot of musicians where you don't have to think that hard to talk, for example, Mm -hmm. or talk through your hands. And, um, for a lot of musicians, yeah, you can be fucked out of your mind and still converse. Yeah. And, and then there's someone else doing the recording. So you don't have to worry about that, you know? And, and a lot of musicians and not so many, these days is like used to um too a lot of touring artists would be on the road like all year they would have fucking headaches from not having in-ear monitors so they just have loud drums loud pa speakers blasting their ears every night so they all have headaches tinnitus so they're all they need to like numb their pain you know like led zeppelin i would imagine all those guys um have just ringing in their ears, like yeah. the ones that are alive. And, um, and it, yeah, you musicians know, musicians are the most abused. Musicians are the most troubled for sure. 
the most troubled. It seems like they're the most abused, but with, by like money wise too. Yeah. We kind of talked about this before. Right. And like their bodies are just abused. Yeah. You know, and like having and they to leave produce, their families, you know, behind. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, I think it's like the most, arguably the most demanding of all the arts. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so strenuous. You just you just are wrung out. Don't you feel like that touring around doing your work a little bit? I'm trying to get better at it. I'm I'm such a yes person. Like mm-hmm. I love the feeling of just rallying. Like oh fuck, I gotta get over like <laughs> three thousand miles in two days to How do this. You fly blah, 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 blah. Anywhere, dude? I love to drive. Yeah, <laughs> I love You'd, driving. Wouldn't you save money on gas? Oh, so much. And food and lodging. Oh, oh, I guess I'd you save stay so much in, money you stay in your car, but. No, I don't stay in my car anymore. Are you afraid I d- to fly? No, no, I like flying too. Oh. I, I just love to drive. It's yeah. I like a day, like nine hours of driving a day makes me is like perfect ish mm. nine ten hours. Um, it just clears my mind. It's one of the few places I find like peace mentally. Mm. You know, that. you might save money if you bought like the Ferrari and you I don't sped, save sped money. between. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know my little Subaru Crosstrek. <laughs> Not the most aerodynamic. It, no, no, but it's safe. It's <laughs> the second time we've had. You should get a dog. <laughs> I, I, I can't do a dog because I love a dog. But it keep you safe, you know. Yeah, but I move too much, and I can't have him with me. Mm. It's. I thought about it a lot. I've even thought about like I don't know, a bird or a like snake. a rat. Yeah, I thought about a snake, but it's even that, like I just I I moved <laughs> to different countries too. And oh yeah. Well, it's lonely. I know. I know. I've, yeah, I've really, I've considered it all. I'm like a spider, a snail. Oh yeah. What can I? I mean, what can I keep in my? Keep you see those my giant person? like bird eating spiders that are <laughs> like you know, the size of your face. I used to have an obsession with spiders when I was a little girl. Really? I used to collect them and oh, organize you, you them. Put them in your bed. Um, <laughs> I had <have> them <laughs> in jars and stuff. Um, I loved bugs. I I remember one time having a jar of. Um, grasshoppers in the car mm. and I dropped it and it went everywhere and my mom was like oh we were in, like driving in the car you know <laughs> as that was I like, that last time my family had like turtles and like frogs growing up and so we go to the fucking uh petco and get crickets you know and dude like every time we went like you would like you like put them in the cage or you drop them and there'd be crickets running around your fucking house <laughs> yeah. for like a week and you just hear, you know, whatever the fuck noise they make. Yeah. Can you just make that sound for me? No, I can't. <laughs> I can't whistle. No, but uh, I can't do any sound effects. No, no me neither. Um, Lame. It's like a. See, I can't, can you not whistle at all? I can't whistle. <laughs> Should put some reverb on your mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. You know, the pets thing, like, I love Rosie, but she's a burden <laughs> in her own way. <laughs> i'm glad she doesn't speak english um as far as you know <laughs> yeah right I feel like animals can speak english they just can't be fucked yeah You're like if they know we speak we'll have so many more um we'll have so much more to do they'll put us to work right yeah yeah they become, Cats for they sure they become little capitalist english. yeah yeah well Love rosie me, i mean rosie knows some words she knows a few words yeah loves peanut butter walk run <laughs> but you know i the thing with um, a pet, first of all, like dogs will live 10 years. So you got a decade mm. of commitment. Yeah. A, a snake. I don't know how fucking long a snake's going to I don't live. either. But like those little rodents, you, you know, it's like a couple year commitment. And when you. Everyone kills hamsters though. Yeah. Hamsters are born to die. You know, <laughs> like they're born to get launched at a wall or something. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. Hamsters live. <laughs> Yeah, the, can you imagine being a hamster breeder in like North Carolina and just like shipping boxes of them to pet coes around the country? <laughs> and there's probably like a hundred of them running around your house. I Wait, that's actually a, can't. That's a, car- <laughs> that's a career. That's someone's doing that. North Carolina hamster breeder. <laughs> that's the dream. It's a type. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's your type. That's my type. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just been looking. They're hard to come by. Yeah, you gotta do more more murals on these coasts. That's probably, yeah. And, you know, I have to drive because all those hamster breeders are probably out in the country. Yeah, you know? and you got to transport them. Mm. Have you done any East Coast murals? Yes. Yeah. New York? Oh, you know, I have some artwork in New York, actually. Some clients in New York, but not a mural there. 
mm. that I can remember. I had a few, but they all fell through. It was during COVID. Bastards. No. Fuck all of them. I wanted to. I wanted to live in. I visited there, and I had no idea how wonderful that is. I thought I'd hate it. Mm -hmm. It's so great. Why? Because the action, the vibrancy well, of the city. Yeah, there's like something different about it. Um, the melting pot part, like the fact that yeah. whatever it is. You can find anyone and everyone. Yeah, but there wasn't that like um, disconnected feel that I thought maybe there would be. You know, like you compliment somebody on the street and they're like, I don't have any money for you, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know where that accent came from. <laughs> but everyone had this like, there was this unspoken like friendship between all the, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it. And it was all just like stacked up on top of each other. It was, was almost like Thailand. It was just tight mm. and just like so full. Um, but I don't know what was so special about it. I just really liked it. It seemed really old. Yeah. Yeah. It is an old fucking Which it, town, dude. It is. Yeah. Compared to the rest. Well, I mean, all well, of I think when you're, young, but... um, <laughs> you know, when you're a young, uh, you know, attractive person, people aren't intimidated by you as much as, you know, if you were a Scary. golem, you know, yeah. golem walking <laughs> <laughs> around New York approaching strangers. Yeah. Um, so I think you can get, you can get away with, you know, uh, attracting energy, melting into a community a bit more. Mm -hmm. Not to knock on anyone who's looks like golem. Uh, ugly, <laughs> <laughs> you know, everyone's a little beautiful in their own way. Um, but but yeah there is i mean people have um there's intimidating people yeah and there's non-intimidating people exactly i didn't this wasn't the goal when i got tattoos but i think when you start getting more and more tattoos people see like a there's an edge about you mm. you know and they might not want to fuck with you in some way because they don't know they don't know which way you will go mm -hmm. but i also find people with a lot of tattoos are also some of the nicest people i've met yeah yeah. You know? It's like metal heads. Right. They're all like teddy bears. Yeah. Usually. <laughs> Usually. I mean, there's yeah. an exception for everything. Always, but, of course. Um, we'll generalize. Yeah. So so you left, so you went to Thailand when you were 18. That's pretty wild. Damn, dude. When, how long are you there? Four months. Yeah. And you then changed I, your life. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, that's a hard thing to say because everything changes your life. But yeah. I, for what you mean by the question, yes, it did. Um, and then I went to four months. Then I went to Barcelona oh. for, and Were I you was painting this whole time. Mm -mm. No, no. I started painting. Um, well, kind of, I went to Barcelona. Then I went to France to paint gypsy caravans for this couple that lived in this castle. Whoa. And they lived in like a castle with a moat, like a fucking moat Damn. and a bridge. So they had money. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know that. And I don't, <laughs> I'm like hyper aware this of what like I tell, say about other people. Feudalism, bro. Um, I think they did, but it was one of those things like never came up. I don't know what their story was. Mm. Um, but it was like this I would have cried life. so hard. Yeah. I, <laughs> I never, I never have. Some people like it's in, it seems like they invite questions and some people. Yeah. Now I'm just like, I don't know. Respect people's space. I got you. Um, but it was like this really, it was a really wild story, but I painted only for like a brief time, but I painted these caravans there, but that was the only painting I did when I moved to Australia after that is when I started the murals because mm -hmm. then I was like, okay, I really have to, I was out of money and I needed to. So you're all over the map, dude. I was all over the map. Wow. Yeah. You should get like a globe, like a, <laughs> a globe for your apartment or a Subaru. And then you like put little tax, put little tax all over the map. It's been so long since I've since I've traveled. It's been like four or five years, but I want to get back out there. So LA, it, LA is your home away from home a little bit. Yeah, it's where I'm based out of, but I move around a lot. I was in Santa Fe for a while mm -hmm. in New Mexico, Seattle. Yeah, yeah, I go back and forth and back and forth. Goddamn! What miles. are you gonna do when your Subaru explodes? You gonna buy a pickup? <laughs> hitchhike hitchhike <laughs> so the brush i need more hand. tattoos before i hitchhike yeah, yeah. no you need a glock bro <laughs> yeah <laughs> Wait. You're, you're i do need a gun you ever yeah you ever shot a gun oh i'm from the country boy oh yeah you are marksman i bet i'm not very good at shooting a gun but i've shot no. lots of guns yeah like what shotgun 
shotguns and glocks and little little ones and big ones and i don't know all the names of them (laughs) 240 f5 winchester (laughs) i would love to see you on a minigun that'd be rad i have a dad that collects guns oh i'm sure dude that's awesome yeah gotta get it because it might be illegal one day gotta get this one what a great reason to buy a gun Uh (laughs) yeah as if you can hold all of them at once yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's the funny thing about the gun thing the gun uh people are really into them it's like like are are you do you think you're gonna be in a situation where you're uh gonna like finish a clip on one gun and then just go grab the other one or you're just not gonna reload that other one like you're done with that gun after you after you spend i think or just like the excitement of shooting on a bunch of different guns okay well yeah i'm not shooting guns to practice like switching between yeah. guns <laughs> <But> <laughs> i think like if i was in a situation where i needed a gun i would have ammunition for that one gun yeah yeah right you don't have a gun locker in your no in your <laughs> i don't own any guns <laughs> I'm, that's gonna be the title of this uh <laughs> july owns 13 guns <laughs> 13 is a good number that's its own thing guns. july is not your real name Mm-mm. do you want do you want to tell the world your real name is that a secret it's not a secret, but it confuses people. Yeah. I found that, like, I'm really open when I meet people. Oftentimes, I'll just tell them my real name, but then they get really self-conscious about the fact yeah. they've been calling me July. And it's like, no, half the people call me July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, what do... And then, yeah, so it it's one of those things. Mm-hmm. I just well, give how, them one how name. How about I call you Emily? You call me Tyler. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because no one fucking Back calls like me Back like the Tyler. old days. <laughs> yeah. The good old Tyler. days. Tyler. You have three first names as a name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my John parent. Michael Vincent. Who's that? <laughs> what is that from? It's from a silly thing. People listening will go, oh. Jean Michael Vincent. Jean Michael Vincent. It's, it's from a cartoon, like a satire like cartoon. Simpsons? And it's a joke. No. It's really popular. It's like super famous. Pickle Rick. Pick, oh, Rick and Morty? Rick and Morty. Yeah. I, I watched that show. I don't know what the fuck that is, though. John Michael Vincent. Is that like the dad? Okay. I don't know, dude. I don't, uh, yeah, we, we could do this. We could do the whole, like, do me you, reenacting the. Do you watch a lot of TV since you're always, like, all over the map? No. No. I love movies though, but I just have to be, I like really curate and especially more nowadays, I really curate what my eyes are drinking because like whatever it is, it's like punching me in the face when I shut my eyes at night to go to sleep. Mm. Like really loud, yeah, vivid. Yeah, problem with sleeping, blah, 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 blah. Huh? Not as bad as it used to be. It's one of those things, you don't know how bad it is until it gets better. I mean, yeah. that's kind of how, that's life. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really realize how shitty that was until it's not shitty. <laughs> That's how my sleep's always been. Sure. Like people go the whole night without waking up was uh-huh. really surprising to me. Yeah. Earplugs help though. That was a huge one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All sort of stimulus. What I about, just really like. What about the eye thing? Like uh, a face sleep a face, mask? Sleep mask? Sure. I don't, I don't do those. That no. makes me claustrophobic. <laughs> oh, you start panicking. <laughs> well, it makes me feel like, <laughs> like here's something to rip it off. And I look again, maybe night I just. Night terrors up the ass. I don't, I don't have night terrors. And I don't think of myself as an anxious person, but like now that I'm thinking about my sleep, maybe I'm quite anxious. Have you ever had like a reoccurring nightmare? Oh yeah. Yeah. Nightmares are big teachers of mine. A lot of times I'll have this reoccurring nightmare and what it is. Oh yeah. I write them all down. A lot of times they have just a lesson within them. Yeah. And, um, there's a point, like I'll have the reoccurring nightmare where I can't become lucid in the, in the dream. Mm -hmm. But then there's, I, ha- I like work on becoming lucid and then I become lucid in the dream. And then that's usually the time that the nightmare stops once I kind of um, unlock the lesson within it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Isn't it usually just like gibberish though? No, no, they're no. big lessons. My dreams are like massive wow. teachers. They're like novels? A lot of them are like novels. <laughs> No, yeah, there's. I've had a couple of dreams that I could write a damn book on. Like Whoa. it was like really, it felt like it lasted months and months and it had like a plot plot twist uh-huh. even even surprise me even though it was my subconscious making it up uh-huh i feel like my dreams are like like i shit myself and exploded or something <laughs> you know and then i wake up <laughs> there's a lesson there <laughs> somewhere like don't eat taco bell before bed i don't know <laughs> and the omen <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't i honestly i forget my dreams and I've never actually written down any of my dreams once in my life. Maybe if you start writing them down, you'll start remembering. Yeah. It's like a muscle uh-huh. trying to like the muscle to remember dreams is like a, it's a weird thing to try and get good at, but mm-hmm. you, you can get, you can make it stronger. You ever sleepwalk? Thank God. No, no. 
Yeah. I the other night I actually woke up sitting up, which was creepy. <laughs> what like I woke vertic- up you were and I was sitting already. up. Yeah. And in I remember ba- on a mattress? In my bed, yeah. Well. And um I remember thinking, This is gonna scare me when I when I properly wake up tomorrow. But I was so too tired, and you're not afraid. What? But then the next day I remembered. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it, it scared the shit out of me. Mm. To sleepwalk is like the most, that's so vulnerable. That's like a fear of mine. I'm so grateful I don't sleepwalk. What if you woke up and you were cooking like a five course meal? And it was like expertly made. <laughs> it was I like mean, in another life you were a Michelin I'd, star chef. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, unlocked. <laughs> There's the your secret right agent. There. But no, you're just a chef. <laughs> Long kiss, good night. Ratatouille shit. <laughs> you ever seen that movie, Long Kiss, Good Night? No. Oh, it's like this woman, and she has this everyday life, and then she gets in a car crash, and then she like awakens her old memory, and she was an old assassin. Whoa. And she just goes badass. She's like this housewife, and then she just like cuts off all of her hair and dyes it blonde. And mm. It's an awesome movie. It's an older one. I love when a, a woman goes mad. <laughs> Me too. And starts murdering. You know, it's That's, one of those. <laughs> you know, it's inevitable. They Can't all, get enough. Of they it. all do. It's true. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Would you ever? Uh, Matter of time. Would you ever hire a hitman? <laughs> oh, I do it myself. Yeah, <laughs> I like to think I'm clever enough. <laughs> yeah, you watch enough uh, CSI Miami. Yeah, I watch enough Long Kiss Goodnight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like those shows. I don't like. No. I don't like true crime or any of that. No. Yeah. My but, friends love it. I enjoy it. I do. Does it? Do you feel like it gives you like a one up because you you're like one step ahead or something? It's thrilling. Why? You know, it gets you racing. Like, what's going on? Oh, who's who's the fucking murderer who's on Main guy? Street? You know, who's the rapist down this down in Calmore? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's a. I also grew up watching like CSI, uh, the Vegas one with my sister. Like my sister watched a lot of like. Like, uh, not, not Halloween shit, but like horror films and like Mm -hmm. always like made me, not made me, but like let me watch them with her. And so like I grew up watching like Halloween and, uh, like Friday the 13th. I loved horror movies when I was a kid. Yeah. Like my favorite, when I was like seven, eight, I was watching like really horrible B movie, uh-huh. like just gory, like why heinous. Do, why do we like watching that? I don't that? know, but I loved it. I yeah. love the scarier, the better. Like I wanted it to make me like nauseous yeah. with fear. No, that's what I like too. Cause it's like, when do you get to experience those emotions? It's a, it's a rare emotion that like, hopefully you don't get to experience those in that day. I was going to say like when, when that <laughs> became a real thing that I yeah. experienced in life and I was like, this isn't fun. I'm not yeah, going to do this exactly. recreationally anymore. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah. Like scary video games, like I can't play those anymore. Like I, I play, I play a few games, but no, I can't. I get stuck in corners because like, my hands don't work, and I'm like trying to get out of the corner. You ever play any Call video of games? Duty? Um, not really. No, I yeah. tried because I'm like, I want to be a gal that can play a video game. Sure. Just like huck one of the controllers in my hand and I beat you, yeah, like yeah. the movies. No, I, I, I will never be good at. There's that. a lot of hand and eye coordination you got to learn for sure. Yeah, and it's like if I'm gonna get good, I could. You could. You know, you, I could. You got the coordination. If I tried. But, like, I can also be good at a lot of other things if I tried, <laughs> yeah. too. So, like, let's pick Dude, one. if I had to games. tally up all the hours I spent as a kid playing video games and, like, put it towards something that could have, you know, made me money or uh, an actual talent that carried into my adulthood, I don't know. I could could have been, been the next Mozart. Who knows? <laughs> you know? <laughs> But I the could have game the could the could have game I love the could have game, but those hours too though it was like a lot of those were spent online socializing with people mm-hmm. or reading reading the subtitles following storylines and um, I did notice I was a much better reader than like everyone in my classes growing up because mm. I was reading these video games all day after school. And so that was a perk, I suppose. Do you think that it's helped your like, um, like say in life, you all of a sudden had to fight a war against aliens. Oh yeah. Do you think maybe you'll have a one up? Yeah, I got some strategy. You have strategy now. Tucked in here. 
yeah, maybe your like <laughs> reaction time and your like your reactions yes, in dude. general have I changed. I do have good reactions because you're like video game mode. A hundred percent. I think you're totally right on that. So you never know. When I was a kid too, I, I, uh, I drew a lot as a kid, and I, I did tell myself like, you know, when you're a kid, you're like people are like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And you're like, you don't know what the fuck you want to do because you don't even mm. know what you can do or mm. what jobs even exist other than what your parents do. And um, I was like, I think I want to be like a, like an artist for video games or something. Like, mm. and I wasn't really drawing, like, uh, you know, video game shit per se, but I was always very um, into uh, just all the all the different aspects of art that went into video games. Like, they're the artists that are creating like the concept drawings. The, yeah. three, the 3D modeling, the audio, uh, the voice actors, the people who are writing the stories, like all these artists come together to make, make these things. And um, I always thought it would have been so sweet to be part of something like that. Mm. But in reality, those things are like, those companies are just these grind, uh, just beating down these artists to mm. hit these deadlines. <laughs> and it's sad, but... Um, I don't know. You know, I, the concept art. I th I thought about that too. Yeah, yeah. You would have you would have liked that probably. Yeah, I mean, I had the. I I'm such a firm believer in like my us always doing the best, making the best decision we can make in that moment. So there's like sure. I don't have a lot of like oh that would have been cool because I needed I needed to leave America. I needed to do all these things. Yeah. But yeah, I've thought about um growing up a lot of people told me like be an architect or be a tattooist or be something that has a little bit more consistency um yeah. like solidity in the art world and honestly like it was good advice because it is so hard to be a painter for a living it's so sure hard do. um but yeah like there's so many really unique careers like concept artists that would have been really cool there's a lot of angles you can take you know and it's and it is interesting. Like a lot of artists don't foresee where they end, they end up yeah. making most of their money, you know, mm -hmm. it, with it. And it's like something just happens where you are trying all these different paths of making money with it. And then one finally like clicks just a little bit and like, yeah, you spend more time with it or, and hopefully you fucking like it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I feel bad for any artist doing art and they don't even like doing it after however however many years you know yeah i feel like you can fix that i hear i hear this a lot like don't have don't do what you love for a living yeah because you'll ruin I it i don't believe in that i think learn how to do what you love for a living and it's yeah. like a re it's, it's like a relationship yeah you have to like there'll be rough spots and you have to work on it uh -huh. and you gotta uh, back up from it every once in a while yeah exactly like there's ways to like mitigate that problem because you can like beat that the magic out of you for sure but i don't know i i don't think there's anything wrong also if maybe if you do like art for a living but your soul isn't really in the like the job part mm -hmm. that's okay that's a job sure. then, then do the, the rest of your time do your painting or do whatever your other art is that's kind of like what i'm wanting to lean into a little bit more maybe make my um kind of split my two worlds because I'm, I'm trying to like pour my heart into everything that I make mm -hmm. and that might be a um I don't know if that's like an approach that will ring me out you know maybe having a portion of my art I create be very um like still obviously try and make it look beautiful yeah but maybe have more of like a template for it something that I can familiarize myself with and kind of like have a well-oiled machine and just mm -hmm. like turn them out and have it be you ever thought about wins. having a storefront yeah yeah, I thought about a lot of things. I'm just like, yeah. priorities, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. The July <laughs> show. The July show. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Start, it, that has a ring. Start the July podcast. Yeah. You're podcast just, would be fun. It's yeah. so fun talking to... I love just to talk to artists. It would be cool if you somehow rigged up a little something while you're painting and you were just talking, you know, to about anything. I would love to hear more, like, the mind of or like the processes that go through an artist's mind when they're making whatever they're making. Yeah. Like you can talk about like, like fucking Bob Ross, dude. <laughs> if you went the July Ross route, 
and you <laughs> and you were you you didn't have to talk about what you were painting the whole time. You could talk about life shit you're dealing mm-hmm. with, but also like and people can watch what you do. Yeah, exactly. No, I I love that because I, I I look up like on YouTube artist interviews or this or that or processes just so I can kind of see into the minds of artists mm-hmm. and it's really hard to find that stuff like i want to hear artists say like okay i'm looking at this right now and i don't like how that corner looks muddy but i'm gonna clean it up with this or like people's like the more um esoteric areas of art not just like um portrait painting painting yeah. skin tone you know that's yeah. so much of that but like getting out of um getting unstuck with like abstract painting which mm-hmm. is so hard like it's so easy to get stuck and it's hard to get out of it. I'd love to hear that. Well, a lot of artists, too, keep a lot of stuff to themselves. They don't want to share. You I don't know? believe in that. They don't want us to share some secrets. I think that if simply sharing your techniques and your tricks makes it so anyone can yeah. duplicate your art, then you mm-hmm. should lean into your art more and make yeah, it so yeah. you can't replicate it. Put a little bit more of your spirit into it or your own nuance. I don't know. I'm happy to share well, all my secrets. Yeah, I don't have much. No, I I agree. I'm I make videos all the time, like showing the shit that I'm doing and how I do it. But it's like, um, yeah, they're like trade secrets that like some people, uh, mm-hmm. some people. I mean, some artists might be embarrassed to share, you know, because it's like, um, it's, it's so easy to mm-hmm. do what they're doing. Maybe yeah, or shortcuts. There's yeah. so much like shame with like traditional painting. Like I hear things all the time like don't use black paint you have to mix it yourself huh. or um painting you know acrylic painting isn't classic it, it well it's not classic i guess but acrylic painting is like um sub like oil painting superior to acrylic which is silly and i don't believe that but there's a lot of um hmm. just uh, you have to ego. make your own paint too <laughs> make, make your own paint grind it yourself you know there's a lot of things like that yeah. oh and like not using photographs not tracing not um like yeah. approach and, and using live models even like there's all these silly things yeah because we're like well that's not what fucking da vinci did uh-huh. it's like well also right it's he, the same thing with know? uh music where it's like um you know like sampling it's it's wrong and it's like all right so let's 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 step back we gotta we gotta go back and just use real instruments guys no no you gotta make your instruments exactly too. yeah then you need to go invent a whole new scale of music too. You need to like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You like you need play to play like, it all at once. Yeah, you need yeah, to go recorded. harvest harvest the minerals in the Congo. Grow to the make, tree yeah. to make the violin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like how far back in like the progression of man mm. or any art form, like do you really need to go to make art? Oh, not far. No, and you're sacrificing so much of what could be with your ego at like how you produce it like oh yeah like i made that paint myself and i like fucking dug it out of the i dug the pigment out of the ground myself (laughs) and you spent like (laughs) you spent all month making this paint which is (laughs) which don't get me wrong it's really cool when people put that much love into it i actually love that and not make any art you know yeah (laughs) (laughs) but the thing is that is actually really cool when people put all the thought into it i think that's beautiful and i and that's part of the art in itself but when people are doing that merely because of the ego side of it or yeah. because they feel as though they should because it's a rule and they're sacrificing what the art could be. Yeah. And you also need to think like of the fucking business mindset a little bit if you want to make money yeah. off of it. You know, it's like you need to think about your costs that's going into the art for you to come out ahead. Yeah. You know, like if you're spending your whole week prepping a canvas and then it takes you a week to finish the thing like you know only pump out like one i don't know how long it takes to make whatever painting or whatever but it's like yeah like how are you managing your time to hit your expenses at the end of the month Mm -hmm. and that's the people that do that though like need to sell their art for way more because yeah the which you know i'm kind of like shitting on this but i also really believe in taking a lot of time on things sure and putting a lot of your like spirit and like in your um intention behind it because you can feel it it's one yeah. of those things we could we can subconsciously see you we not might not be able to pick it out but we can see paintings that there is soul in it sure and you, when you can see all the little brush strokes and all that time like that's priceless mm-hmm. it's something you actually don't see a lot of nowadays we have this hyper perfect modernist oh yeah there's yeah we have an erasing of history within 
a lot of artwork, which it's its own aesthetic. Blah, blah, blah. But I think like we're really um, hungry for just like things that take time. Mm. Everything is so quick. Yeah. Yeah. Polished. Yeah. No, I agree, dude. I think, um, yeah, people, we just li also live in this like um, society where we want things to happen, to be mm -hmm. done, you know? You have short attention spans. Yeah. Oh, so short. Like I, I see myself my own attention span getting short and it's like, I do a lot to mm. mitigate that. But I mean, yeah, you think of kids with fucking TikTok where it's like, I'm they, they, it they, they can't get past like a 10 second video anymore. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. You need to be bored. Boredom's yeah. really important. Yeah, it is. And it is, it's, it's, it's important for you. Yeah. To maybe step back from exhausting your creativity, maybe. And it's also important to re-energize, you know, absorb things around you, absorb other art forms to maybe influence your art. But I think boredom also, if you are inherently lazy, boredom could just make you lazier. You know, where, mm -hmm. yeah, you just get stuck in the TikTok. No, hour. I'm saying like boredom, like you're sitting like when you're a kid sitting in the lawn playing with a stick boredom, not oh. TikTok boredom. That's <laughs> yeah. bad. That's yeah. like sure, sure. really bad. Right. Do not you're becoming a robot. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's super scary. No, those moments where you space off and you just kind of like your brain just kind of defrags. Yeah. You, you don't even know what you're thinking about. I think it's really important. You're kind of working through problems. You're, um, maybe like reflecting a bit on the day and like, Oh, I really shouldn't have, that might not have been the nicest thing to say. Those little moments of just like shower thought boredom mm -hmm. is so important for our mind. And they actually done some studies on it, like where you're, what, what's happening in your brain there and how important it is for creativity. Yeah. And I think that's what driving is for me. Like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. purity, singular objective. I hope you like, have cruise control, dude. <laughs> I do. Yeah. That's good. But you're, I, you're afraid to use it. Why would I be afraid to use it? <laughs> I don't know. You think, you think your car is going to lock on? <laughs> I, my cruise again? control doesn't work very well. Like whenever I go on a hill, it like, just like goes. Nee! Mine disengages after two seconds, so it doesn't work. Oh, really? Yeah, it's real sad. Because your car is old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it in one year older than yours? Is that what you told me? Uh, mine's 216. Oh, okay. <laughs> mine's in 09. Someone, someone else told me that. How long are you in LA for then? Oh, I'm going to be like... Dip in Monday? No, I'm going to be here for like another week-ish. Nice, dude. And then I'm going to go back to Seattle and I'm going to come back here again. There's like a job that... Well, it's a, it's kind of a mess. I'm like living nowhere, back and forth. I'll be living both places here in Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. The nomad life. Yeah, I'm like... I'm in the middle of kind of like organizing things at the moment. You're so kind it's of funny a gypsy you in your own way. I'm a gypsy. <laughs> yeah west coast gypsy i i tried to settle down and i find settle down how so like like live in one spot oh com yeah completely both feet um <laughs> at the same time and it was i can for a bit <laughs> just like i'm not ready right now in my life to yeah to really park sure magic happens when i move i it, well, it, something it happens seems like when i'm you moving need it for your art yeah yeah Obviously to go do it, but mm -hmm. also to to make it in its infancy, you know? What do you mean? Traveling, for me at least, you know, gives me things to write about. Yeah. Things, things to, uh, to sing about. Yeah, it's like it stirs things up and creates more experience and then more passionate. Yeah. It creates more passionate. <laughs> it creates more passion and then... Well, travel, for things for you to work travel is so good for you, dude, because you meet people that you'll, you would never meet otherwise, mm. and you will see things you'll never, you would ne most people don't get to see, because mm. most people are landlocked um, to their little town because of their work or yeah. family. Yeah. And that's something I tell my, I have to, I have a lot of like internal conversations about like, well, what should I, there's a lot of like, should, people don't do this. This isn't how I should live. Mm. But I have such a unique job and like i have no attachment i mean i don't even have a, a hamster <laughs> to take care of i know a guy <laughs> <laughs> in south carolina <laughs> but i like my life is just such a 
It's like I'm, I need to take advantage of the fact, or I can take advantage of the fact yeah. of my lack of strings attached to anything and my ability to work anywhere. Um, but yeah, every once in a while, I'm like, I really I should find a place to actually live. Like, actually, no, I shouldn't do anything. I should just do what feels good for a while. And it'll... Well, things you're young, will fall dude. Place. It's like, do... You, be a fucking hippie while you're young, you know, and and uh, and flexible. Yeah. And you're not, you don't have achy bones, you know. Yeah. A lot of people just work themselves to fucking death until they're 60 or 50. Then they go play. And, and then they go play, but they can't really play very hard because they're fragile you know mm -hmm. and uh or they don't want to hurt themselves or they're or they're um i don't know they lose a spark when you get old and in your ways a little bit too. because you spent so much of your life like working your soul away yeah exactly. no judgment i mean there's plenty of people i know that enjoyed their job and retired sure, sure. And, you know. no but it's true though <laughs> disclaimers <laughs> they don't but yeah yeah it is true like play while you're bouncy right. while you're still bouncy exactly yeah yeah dude. i'm losing that the bounce are you <laughs> no i mean like you seem bouncier than oh i'm ever i'm a i'm a bouncy human but i like <laughs> that ability to um well i can't drink anymore oh, I, yeah. I just told you this yeah what happened ago. with that i just like my body chemistry changed and did. now it just is an absolute it's so rare that it's worth the trade like I am just barring joy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can be a little tired or this or that. It's okay. Yeah. The next day, but like it genuinely, it just like sucks out all like the joy, the inspiration. I'm usually really like what my brain uh -huh. to like just um, like <laughs> high electricity. It feels like and just alcohol takes it all away. And I'm pretty comfortable most of the time. A lot of people like to drink just to like take away the nerves. Mm -hmm. And I used to do that for sure, but um, that's not really a problem anymore. So I don't I ha don't have many much reason for it. Although I love drinking and singing. you don't want to take a shower right now. <laughs> <laughs> I used to take a shower. I'm like oh, no. not so much. No. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> probably go take could use one. Right one. Now. <laughs> Can you wait? Uh, but no. I do love whiskey. I mean, I love whiskey. Yeah. I love beer, and I love just to, like go to a pub and sit down and like yeah. have a beer. I love that life, and I'll probably always will my whole life. Yeah. But. I just like the taste of beer. And yeah, I, well, I me too. Maybe that's the Irishman in me and the German in me, mm. you know. And <laughs> yeah, I like a. I'm not drinking this to get a buzz on or an edge or like it doesn't. It doesn't make me a better talker. Mm -hmm. At least from what I find, it makes me a worse talker. Me too. I just like it. Yeah, I just like the taste of an, a cold Modelo. Bro. I completely no. I I get that. Yeah. And I. What's your favorite type of beer? Uh, like a blonde ale usually. Oh. Yeah. You could be a blonde ale if you were a beer. Do I look like a blonde ale? Yeah. 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 Thank you. It's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. You look like a stout. Ooh, see, that's my favorite. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Hell look yeah. Look at that. What kind of stout at Guinness? I like Guinness. Yeah. You know what one I really love is, um, there's two. It sounds kind of gross, but there's a peanut butter stout by like <laughs> something beaver is the brand. And this, it sounds disgusting, but it's so yummy. I like the really like desserty. I also love Left Hand Brewing's Milk Stout. Mm. That one's really yummy. I love, uh, I love going to uh, like some random liquor store because they do like the mix and match packs, you know, where you can get like six different hipster beers. Mm. <laughs> it's like, uh, um, yeah, it's like some shitty craft craft beer that it's like, yeah, this, this is probably gonna taste so bad, but it has a beautiful graphic on it. And that's love that's, what's, that's what that's what sells you on them because it's like yeah. you don't know what the fuck is gonna taste like. I'm it's, judging it by its cover. It's all about the graphic. The whole thing. Don't judge a book by its cover. What <laughs> else are you gonna judge yeah. it on? I have a buddy. You're not gonna read the book then judge it. Exactly. Exactly. The name. The name is everything too. Mm -hmm. Um, like a milk stout. Like yum. Like I, there doesn't even have to be milk in here, but I'm intrigued. Exactly. <laughs> you know, curiosity. But I have wins. a buddy in Chicago. His name is Louis Capazzoli. He's an awesome illustrator, and graphic designer, and he does Mars Brewing is based out of Chicago and he does all of their graphics hmm. and they're so cool and fun, dude. Yeah. Like beers, craft beers have, I love the art culture with them. Yeah. They have such good, such good art. I can, I can go to like the old liquor stores and just look at the art for inspiration. It's like going to a library. <laughs> the guy's like, you gonna fucking buy something? I'm looking for inspiration. <laughs> Get the fuck out. 
liquor stores are a funny thing too because it's like you get <laughs> you get you get every tax bracket coming into your, your store you know <laughs> Probably mostly the medium to low. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say the opposite. You think so? Liquor stores, are you kidding me? I feel like, yeah. I have it in my head that like the richer you are, the more alcohol you drink. But maybe that's just me. You think Jeff is fucking drunk? Bezos? Oh, I mean, okay. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're winning on this. <laughs> he's probably straight edge as fuck, dude. I feel like there might be more. I'm Actually, drinking. I'm not going to make drinking, any generalizations. He's drinking yet. like blood of... Uh, baby. He actually drinks my blood, my blood. <laughs> Your blood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You saw it. That's my side directly. Gig. Yeah. He probably pays you hands. He's one of my patrons. Yeah. Yeah. Artists need a patron, dude. We need patrons. We do. You know, uh, what the fuck's his name? <laughs> I think it's Haydn. He was a composer, like from like two hundred, three hundred years ago. I think it was him. I could be wrong. I don't know him anyway. They so all I'll blend together. You. you would know some of his his music but he uh he had like a cousin who just like paid for his apartment paid for all of his expenses because he loved his music Mm, van gogh his brother paid yeah and it's like he just you just kept making art because someone loved your shit yeah and that's like the secret i would love to be somebody who could pay other artists there's so many artists i know that i'm like if i could just support you so you can be comfortable totally and feel secure so you can make your art freely although i do think that some artists create better work because of their struggling of struggle and it's sad to say but like (laughs) not to romanticize at all the starving artists which i don't think that that should be encouraged Mm -hmm. but like a, a state of um some adversity is good dude yeah it is good Mm -hmm. and a little bit of um not even just for art but for anyone you know if if everything is handed to you on a silver platter why would you try to get good at anything yeah yeah we gotta have hunger you need you need that a hung well hunger in all in all senses like (laughs) a genuine like hunger for things like an ache for things striving is just like to get to that next level yeah yeah i mean there's a reason you see so many spoiled rich kids who are like do nothing with their lives you know because they have nothing nothing uh they aren't worrying about hitting a bill some suffering is suffering is good it's not necessary by any means but it's just like often does it makes the best art (laughs) i know i hate i hate generalizing with these things but i honestly i i mean i've suffered a lot yeah (laughs) and it's made the best art like i can't all of my best work has come except for like as of recently my i've had great work come from the opposite of suffering i think Mm. like thriving yeah in a way but it's still quite ambiguous the whole experience but for the most part suffering has yeah there's a balance to it all you know if you're (laughs) yeah if you're depressed as fuck all the time we don't even want to make art obviously But if there's, you know, something that keeps you coming back to it or something that perks you up in the morning or makes you smile for a moment, I don't know, there, there is some, there is funny, like some artists that just make the most morbid work, you know, like I, I love uh, artists who make like Halloween masks, you know, like mm. the badass, like prosthetic. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> walking into their house must be a fucking trip. I yeah, and they usually don't have creepy minds. They no. just know. I love Halloween too. Like that's like too. my that's my fucking holiday. Yeah. No, I I've there's a lot of really dark like images that I've had in my mind that I know if I painted would be really scary, but I don't see them as a scary thing. Yeah. And I've just like veered away from it because it's not necessarily what I felt really drawn to do. But right now, a lot of that do wants it. to come out. I'm gonna yeah. I'll buy one. Make creepy stuff. Yeah. Um. I think it'd feel kind of good to like bring it to life. I used to be really afraid when I was a little girl of like what I draw. I thought I made it. I thought I brought it to life. So I do Mm -hmm. a lot of these like drawings of um, really creepy things just Mm -hmm. so I can get it out of my head. But then all of a sudden it's looking back at me. So I take these drawings and hide them under my bed (laughs) and then it'd scare me that they're under my bed. But I didn't want to like throw them away because then I didn't want it to be angry at me. (laughs) So I had. You thought they all are possessed. It felt like it. Well, once you draw eyes. Yeah. It's real. Look at you. It, but you can draw eyes to a point, and then there's just like one shadow that you do, or like one little highlight, and all of a sudden, pop, they're awake. Yeah. And it's looking at you. It's like, you, know, you know what you should do? 
and what? I might pay you to do it. What? Like a body of a guitar, dude. Painting like some crazy illustrations across mm. a whole guitar. I never done a guitar. That'd be fun. Because there's a lot of fucking, <laughs> you know, players out there that would pay for that too. That'd be a fun world to be a part of. I want to be in the music world more, like yeah. album covers. Sure. And, yeah. Integrate myself into the music world. Uh-huh. It's very important in my life. You want to draw me naked for my next album? On your guitar. <laughs> yeah. With your guitar on your guitar. Okay, na- yeah. you naked, G- guitar like covering. Titanic style. Yeah. With your guitar, taking that. <laughs> Titanic style. <laughs> Taking that and painting that on your guitar, it'll be like a little inception. <laughs> Titanic style is even the name of the album. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. How about um, how about we trade a uh, synth for a painting? What am I gonna do with that? I don't know how to how to <laughs> synth. I don't know. Okay. A weird fact about myself: there is. We should actually play around see if we can find the specific sound. But I've had I had this weird auditory hallucination for a while, and it has gone away. Mm. But for a while, I'd hear this like synth noise, and it'd wake me up. It, you know, it was not there, mm. of course, but it was like this weird, really loud. It would um, like jolt me awake, like the THX. Yeah, <laughs> you know that sound? the loudest yeah. fucking noise, um, kind of like that, but really, lo- really fast. It just went, I and it make, would like go I through my head. Can make it happen for you? I'd love to have a like a to hear it. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Just so I can say like it was that noise. Yeah. Um, but I remember for a while it was driving me nuts, and I actually was reading this book on hallucinations by Sax Oliver Sax. Hmm. Um, it was all about hallucinations and part of it was like auditory ones. I actually had a lot of weird similarities between these people in this book with like brain tumors and all these hallucinations, which <laughs> there's like this frontal lobe epilepsy thing that happened to some people, which I also realized like I had, I had to anyway, <laughs> you not going to make my, you a lobotomy. I'm trying not to convince myself I have a brain tumor, but so much would make sense if I did. <laughs> um, but yeah, like auditory hallucinations, people would hear like jazz music or like, mm an opera i got really high one time marijuana high mm-hmm. which it doesn't take me very much um sure. very very lightweight with that but i heard like this choir singing amazing grace for like the longest time i was trying to go to sleep what? oh it was like so loud and i was i i couldn't i didn't have my faculties i just had to like lay there paralyzed listening to this choir sing amazing grace i think you do have a tumor dude <laughs> I might have to call someone for you. <laughs> oh, I wonder where it's at. Like maybe left brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My the the machine just, skills. Just start knocking around like you're looking for a stud in the wall. Yeah, maybe that'll work. <laughs> just listen for like a for a, it to sound hollow. Hollow. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Well, let's. Um, I got some people who are looking for some advice. Oh, from we, me. For both of us. For, okay. That we can we can help them out on. Okay. Some uh, some of them are funny. Some of them are desperate. I like this. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Do the desperate one first. The desperate one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. All right. This one's kind of sad. Mm. Okay. My cat died in my arms this morning. I can't get the image of her dying out of my head. How did you cope with your first pet loss? Oh, wow. Did you grow up with pets? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I never had any experience like that at all. No? Like, I've, whenever my pets died, I was gone. And it was, I was, like, really disconnected from the experience. Mm. I mean, I would say with anything that's painful, like, lean into it always. Yeah, just grieve grieve and like burn through it like feel it as deeply as you can because the more you feel the more it like it really is burning away you yeah. know like alchemize that shit sure yeah i, I grew up with That's boxers so my whole life well, i've had dogs my whole life and um we would bring them to this hospital i mean the my our first boxer ozzy he passed away when he was 10 we had to put him down he got like this i think he had like a fucking brain tumor he started having seizures and he wouldn't fall asleep. He would walk around the mm. house all night. Mm. It's real sad. Also slow. Real slow. And uh, I would hold him when he was having a seizure. And it was like the saddest oh, thing you've man. ever seen. And so we brought him to uh, Prizer Animal Hospital to 
they get put down and they inject like a huge dose of Valium in them to put them to sleep. And yeah, you just feel them. If you feel them doze off, then it's the saddest fucking thing ever. Mm. Cause you're, you're the one killing them, but you're putting them out of yeah. misery, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, you think, you think about them for like a month straight, you know? And then your last image is them passing, which would be hard. Yeah, but we're also lucky that we do live in a time that we get to take so many photos. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, like, remember all those. Granted, I was in first up. grade. There wasn't as many. We didn't have smartphones. But um, still, it's like you remember the good stuff. The bad stuff, sure. But you don't dwell on that. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And we, I mean, I think about like, this is the first dog like Rosie, like is basically my daughter, you know, like <laughs> she heard you. <laughs> she heard me. Um, and, That's cute. Uh, you think I'm your daughter? <laughs> and I know, like you better not die. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's 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 like, um, and they want you to be there when they die. Like they they don't want to die alone. I don't think so. Mm -mm. They they want to see their their dude on their last moments. Yeah. I think, yeah, reassuring yourself that like the whole cycle is right and no, no one did anything wrong. I think that's important. Thing, yeah. You know, because that, that would be hard to look at it and go, oh, I hope I did everything right. And I, right, I could have right. done this. And yeah. I mean, too, like some people process. spend like 10 fucking grand on like sur yeah. surgeries and shit. And it's oh, like, yeah. It's like, dude, like at some point you just need to let it go. You know, like you can't prolong the inevitable with, with these animals that don't live long, you know? But some people can't can't accept that they have to let go, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's a hard um, part of being a pet owner because your death will probably be part of your life with them. I mean, sorry, their death. Yeah, You're, they're gonna die first. <laughs> right, You're right. gonna have to deal with it probably. Yeah. I hope I die before Rosie. <laughs> that, that would save me a lot years. of heartache, you know. What's the life expectancy expectancy of boxers? Like ten years, yeah, ten yeah. Years. I mean, yeah, you buy a pet knowing for a while it's going to die. Yeah. You know, they ain't going to live. I would love if Rosie lived for 80 years, you know, but that ain't, that ain't happening. That that whole uh, concept of, you know, awareness of the ending of things. Mm -hmm. I run into this all the time. Like knowing something's going to end and it being a reason not to do it is yeah. so silly because sure. everything, everything, you know, is going to end. Either you're going to end first or it will end mm -hmm. with you. But like getting finding a place where you find peace within the assuredness that everything is going to yeah. end and still doing it and enjoying it while it's there. Right. Like she I'm not going to eat this apple because it's going to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, that's dumb. It's but, dumb. <laughs> but humans, humans also, we, we live our lives thinking we're going to live forever. You know, it's only in the last like decade or, or whatever that we start really seeing our mortality come into fruition a little bit. Oh man, not for me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, most, you know, young people usually are yeah. very loose and whimsical and, and live life on the edge, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and it's like, yeah, you only have a few decades of youth and, um, and yeah, you're lucky if you make it to old age, really. Mm -hmm. So, so it is sad when people don't, try and live it to the fullest to some degree it is very sad i can agree with that <laughs> yeah we we need to be um keep a closer relationship with our mortality we get very sure we are a very disconnected society nowadays yeah dude we're we very really disconnected are. with death and i think it's good if you're not exposed directly to death then go scare yourself go jump out of a plane yeah yeah have you done that I have to out of a plane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's like the most enlivening thing dealing with death. How many people, I mean, you can ask almost anyone who has experienced death of someone close to them, um, its effect. And sometimes it kills them too, sadly. You know, some people, they shut down. They and can't it, handle it's, it, yeah. It's rare that that happens. Oftentimes, they become twice as alive. Mm -hmm. It's like the dead, the dead people just like go into them. Mm. And also a lot of people's like regrets of who they wish they were when those people that they loved were alive, all of a sudden change them into that person, like who they wish they were, all mm. of a sudden they become kind of as like this, 
um, tribute to their death. You know, yeah. like, I'll make this worth it by becoming exactly who I wish I was for you. Sure, yeah. So it like awakens the world. Yeah, too, or, or having um, having some concept of uh, of like where where your body's going. Like, I don't really believe in an afterlife, but people who do, that's comforting for them. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> it would be great, dude. I would love one. Believe, don't get me wrong. Like, I would love to believe in it, but I don't. <laughs> and uh, if anything, I, I would love to just be sitting in a pile of all my past pets, you know, you know, just running through a field, drinking Modelo's. Drinking <laughs> blonde. Blood, blood, of, blood of July. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's blonde ales or whatever you yeah. said, but you know, yeah, that would also be pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think it just turns off at least for me. That's my, my take on it. Or turns it. back on again. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is that, is that, that was a baby. Is that what you? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was you. <laughs> it actually <laughs> was me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but uh, do you believe in reincarnation? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't used to, but I do now. Huh. Mm -hmm. What would you like to be? Oh, what would I like to be? It's your second coming. I don't know. I really love being a human. Oh yeah. I Sorry, do. I you, grew you up. You get one of those. I don't think so. I no? don't think so. I grew up quite uncomfortable as a human. I was just so uncomfortable with all things. I wasn't so, I was self-conscious yeah. and like embarrassed that whole, just like the teenage conundrum, whatever that is. Uh -huh. But it wasn't until like the past four or five years that I started to really like, holy shit, I love existing as a human. I love what we can make. Like, I love my hands. Yeah. I love and my voice and like how we can dance, how we have the choice to move like we want to for the yeah. most part. Most of us. <laughs> I love it. It's like just awesome. And it really quickly can suck a lot, but it also very quickly can be just like cosmic. So you wouldn't want, it seems like you could do all of that if you're like an octopus or something. That's a good point. I mean, <laughs> that you can't sing. You don't know that. <laughs> I don't know that. Yeah, actually. Maybe they can't. They just have to be you underwater. You don't speak octopus. I don't speak octopus. They probably speak <laughs> English. not yet. They can know. probably, <laughs> nothing that I'll just close. <laughs> They'll do all the studies on me if people can find out I speak yeah. octopus. Yeah. There's octopus cults out there. Yeah. They got octopi cults. Octopi cults. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's try another one here okay mm -hmm. we got to octopus colts from that last <laughs> i don't know how we got to that one um you led me down that that rabbit hole okay this is interesting mm. i found out a guy i'm dating is subscribed to a girl's only fans and i can't shake the ick the idea of him paying for a specific girl's content makes me feel sick to my stomach and seems like a lot more personal slash intentional than just casually viewing porn it doesn't bother me at all that he's viewing content for pleasure but only fans just change the way i view him maybe i'm making a bigger deal of it than i should but appreciate your perspective oh <laughs> this is actually hilarious yeah. this is where i'm good at the bad advice part yeah, yeah. of this podcast <laughs> i am like so not a relationship guru yeah. oh my gosh um, I am super quick to let go of mm. like, just, um, I don't, I don't know the word for it. I'm really fucking hard to please. <laughs> Got you. So like personally in this situation, I think, um, I'd be gone. Oh yeah. You dip out of me. Yeah. But let's really like, let's like, let's so unpack you, this you actually. Discuss, Cause that might not be fair. You want to talk through anything. Um, I think first off, like ask the person ask the guy and have and like what yeah. type of only fans is it i yeah. mean i'm assuming it's like what only fans is famous for well you know this is a funny thing because it's really just they're just porn stars mm. and it's like some people like specific porn stars because they perform a specific way mm. on camera you know at it's least like, he's it, paying you know that's pretty yeah, great he's paying for their art yeah <laughs> yeah you know and um i don't I don't subscribe to anyone on OnlyFans. Is like, why would I pay for porn? But um, 
but at the same time, I know people who do make content for OnlyFans and they're like, pay for it, pay mm-hmm. for it. Yeah. Um, and I get that. I think it's awesome. I mean, I think it's like, porn's going to exist. It always yeah. has and it always will. Right. And people that can be their own boss and control what content they're creating uh-huh. and um, be paid for it, like compensated how they want. That's awesome. Sure. Yeah. But like OnlyFans aside... OnlyFans is unique too because you can like talk to them a little bit, mm-hmm. which is when oh, that would be uncomfortable for y- sure. Yeah, if they have like an intimate relationship with this person, right? But to yeah. them, it might seem intimate. But from the creator, they don't give a fuck about anyone they're talking to. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that for a fact because <laughs> they're just people paying them to see. Well, like, yeah, they're performers. Mm-hmm. You know, I get I get where she's coming from of seeing the ick around mm-hmm. it. But I also don't think, um, I don't really think there is, it's not as icky from my perspective. And that's another thing is like the sexuality of whoever's asking this versus the sexuality of their partner might be completely different. Yeah. And it might mean totally different things. Like for me, if I were to have that relationship with somebody, I know what it would mean to me. And you can't yeah. always view what other, what someone else is doing through the lens of right. why you would do it. Uh-huh. So that's an, you know, but, um, <laughs> I think like first thing would be like talking to the person about yeah, it and seeing yeah, like, yeah. what is this relationship like? Right, because right. yeah, I mean, porn is, I think we have a, um, when you, I mean, you can definitely be, be buying like grass fed porn and then you're fucking spending Walmart like a thousand, porn. Yeah, totally. Dude. And if you're spending a thousand dollars a month on, on this fucking chick, then yeah. it's a problem. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you're sending her a fucking like $5 bill every once in a while, sure. Yeah. But there, there's a threshold of ick, you know? Yeah. I love that word, by the way. That's like <laughs> a new, like really in word. <laughs> ick? Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> it's a good one. Um, I kind of like it too. Yeah. It's like a, it's a silly <laughs> version of gross. Right, right, right. Yeah, but, that's a hard question. Yeah. I also, guys obviously watch a lot more porn than women do. Mm. That's just like a proven statistic. So it makes sense that statistically some of those dudes are paying for it mm-hmm. and i think it's kind of cool that you're paying for it i think that's great yeah yeah pay. give your money to someone right, right. instead of getting it for free true like dude. tyler <laughs> have some respect <laughs> you're okay? right dude i'm a fucking <laughs> asshole god damn it i gotta start paying paying some porn stars oh i can't give relationship advice okay okay <laughs> <laughs> you just Fair like I, i'm so i well my thing is like so you're you're in a pseudo relationship or not in a relationship? Oh, I don't know how much I can say of this because it's not my entire story, you know, and I'm trying not to speak for gotcha. other people. Gotcha. But gotcha. I am involved. Yes. <laughs> I'm That's involved. That's the most vague shit I've ever heard. I, I'm being vague because it's not entirely me to just <laughs> okay. my choice okay, okay. to disclose. I got you. You don't have to yeah. talk about it. Yeah. I got you. Well, um, relationships are funny, though, because it's like... Uh, Especially for someone who's like all over the map, you know, like how do you maintain it? Oh, I, I just, I'm single all the time. <laughs> I mean, I, um, yeah. for, so I, you don't know this about me, actually, this is new to you. Yeah. Um, I had a, like, I grew up, I, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin this story. I was with one of my best friends for a few years. We grew up together and then we, um, we became like life partners and he actually died. Like when I was 23, mm. he died. Sorry. And so, thank you. For a while, I was just like with, and we were going to get married. We were just fucking, it was like the end. Like we was sorted out. That was it. Mm. Um, and I had no question. But he was like evil Knievel and like he died skydiving. <laughs> yeah. Which, but we, growing up, he almost killed himself so many times um, that like when my brother died, that was like this realization that like this fucker's going to die real soon. Like I had this awareness talking about like making you more alive when you were yeah. dealing with death. Sure. Um, yeah. So that kind of played a part in me. Real. I was always afraid to like be with him because I knew he was going to die young, but I'm kind of going on a tangent right now. But when he died, I was just like, I'm just going to be married to a ghost in my mind. And that's okay. I'm in a relationship with a ghost. He's in the wind. He's, I'm actually closer with him now than, I would have been trying to like have a long distance relationship um, mm. with him before and when he was like confined to skin. 
Um, so I had this kind of strange, a strange standard for one for relationships because loving him was like loving fucking wildfire. It was insane and arguably unhealthy, but yeah. I, but it was so beautiful. I can't even explain. We were both just really fiery, but like, I don't know my, my re relationship to relationships is so different than, um, most and I'm like really happy. Um, I'm really happy alone. And it's, you know, and every once in a while, I there, there's so many aspects to relationships that are really, mm -hmm. um, that I like do desire. Like somebody knowing you really well, being able to like cuddle up to somebody. But I also like having experienced um, losing someone that was like your other side that you mm -hmm. just reached to without thinking. Sure. Um, having like there was like a year at least of me reaching out to him and he wasn't there so like there is a bit of um trepidation with introducing another body that i yeah. reached toward like that sure but of course it's a silly thing to um avoid something because it's just scary mm -hmm. i don't know i'm just yeah. i'm picky i love people i'm so attracted to people yeah like entirely but when it comes to that physical side that physical pairing it's just a whole different thing yeah i get it it's years of, yeah, when you're so madly in love with someone, how do you, um, and then that love ends without your say in the matter. It's it's almost like you never stop loving them, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I never will, Yeah, for sure. I get that, man. That's rough. And um, I'm sorry that happened, but it's also beautiful that you are keeping him alive in your day and day yeah and i mean it's not it's definitely not a sore subject for me and it doesn't feel granted it's like a tragedy as tragedies go but it was Sky, all skydiving skydiving it was his fault he it was all his complete his doing like it wasn't like his yeah. parachute didn't open or something um but like and it was the way he would joke about dying too yeah, yeah. he knew it was he knew in those cards yeah like it was just yeah. It was. It felt really orchestrated. I even dreamt about him dying a few days before. There was all these really crazy things that happened prior to it that made it so when he did die, it wasn't a no. Like I mean, when my brother died, I was like, "The fuck no!" Like mm. it was like things broke and were, and uh, I was so it was so unexpected and felt strange and like kind of yeah. like the dimensions and everything were twisting. When Spencer died, it was like this. I didn't feel wrong. It's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. I screamed. I fucking like I was giving birth, but it was, uh, I don't know. It felt like everything was just perfect. Honestly, it felt like this perfect. Mm. Yeah. Damn, dude. So odd, but it was all like his whole entire life, the way he lived and the way he died was just this beautiful story mm. and even died the way he wanted to die. I have, you you hear so much people you hear people say um it's such a tragedy they went so early like he should have been here longer as if existing for a longer amount of time makes something more important or mm. worth it or yeah. you know like artwork has to last for hundreds of hundreds of years um it's a shame if it's gone before and it's really not a shame yeah you know they, no matter how long that things exist um i, th I don't think anything is forgotten you know, I don't think anything's lost or less important because it's here for less time. Yeah. It's its most relevant and it's time that it's made. Yeah. And it needs, I don't know. It, it needs no, um, I was going to say like borders, but th this is something I'm still trying to work on. I actually have some projects sure. I'm like trying to illustrate this with, like this whole concept of mm -hmm. like a short life doesn't make it a less important life mm -hmm. of anything. Some of the most important figures in her culture are people who passed away in their 20s yeah yeah sometimes like dying or being snuffed out right at your peak is what makes the biggest is what shakes the world the most yeah and then changes things mm -hmm. yeah that's the secret then huh yeah <laughs> just right right at the peak I, of the wave gotta, <laughs> gotta time your peak exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm still working on mine. We're, we're 27, you, man. You, you, should we kill each other? Th right this now? is the. This is the. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah.
that go down in history yeah, on a podcast you kill me on my peak i kill you you at your can't peak. you need to like produce this though you know you can't die yet oh. if we can't kill each other on this podcast oh, otherwise yeah, it'd be I gotta, stuck i gotta release it yeah before your birthday mm. july 13th <laughs> so is that why you're july no i'm not well spencer died in july oh okay. yeah so i was like born in july died in july all these really strange things happen also that's not like the reason that's one of the reasons but I love the feeling of July. Mm. I thought about like what I wanted my artwork to feel like. Um, and it's that month. It's like hot and bright yeah. and thriving and exciting. It's the, and it's the best fucking month, dude. It's the best fucking month. I love the way it sounds. Yeah. It's just important to me. I was like, let's just go with that. It's the, it's the worst for like SEO. People type in like July oh, artists. Yeah. It's like you get 4th of July. Oh, right. It's like, I don't, I wasn't really thinking about that. What's, what's your last name? Sherwood. Sherwood, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want you want to be July Sherwood. That's its own fucking artist name. I went. I I signed my stuff E E Sherwood, and I, you know what? Maybe I'll go back to using my name one day. I wanted to be July now, so I just was well, just changed it. <laughs> but like, there might be a time I want to kind of change my brand or change mm. things. Because right now, my art is you like be June. I'll be June. <laughs> <laughs> what an idea! No. <laughs> <laughs> so be stupid. october yeah october, well, I, mean, I like that it that is um, that's catchy well i my artwork is gonna change really dr dramatically like what i've made isn't what i want to make now which mm -hmm. is making commissions i'm doing really hard because people bought my old style and it's like i'm trying to tap into that again but it's just not here anymore hmm i got you yeah just being just start being like real abstract with that it's, yeah it's gonna get i'm gonna mix more abstraction into it but like i'm trying to imp implement more like dissonance inside of it like my work right now is relatively comfortable to look at you have like i have kind of articulated dimensions and like you know what you're looking at you know what the center is your eye kind of mm. but i love like i've been studying more like surrealists and optical illusions and i love how like dali I love that shit. Like makes this makes a landscape and he has like the isolated like sections of the landscape and it seems to make perfect sense. And then you look at something and it's actually in the foreground and you thought it was in the and when it, but it is part of the background. Mm -hmm. But I love how it like really disturbs your sense of peace because we start to become really blinded by um, anything that we look at that is uh, this is this word. This cracks me up. This is one of those words that once I can see it coming in my sense, I won't be able to won't be able to remember what it is what's the word meaning that you know what's going to happen with something P anticipate you, you can predictable predictable uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> predictability uh -huh. with anything in the world we kind of go on autopilot and we don't see it's okay. like light switches in a room you sure. know like you just don't see it because they're there all the time we do that with artwork too i think if it's too perfect too perfect too hyper realist even mm -hmm. we kind of just are numb to it blind to it yeah. just bo boring in a way but like throwing something in there that like rips you out of that. Isn't that just bad art? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> you can have really beautiful, like really incredible skilled artists making beautiful artwork, but there's something that's too peaceful about it, I think. At least for yeah. what I want to make. Yeah. I don't want it to be too peaceful. Not I want it to naked make. bitches. Exactly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I need I need more naked women in my photos. That's, that's I love I love naked women. I love painting them. I'll never have enough. Yeah. <laughs> You got a whole closet of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, we got real deep on that one. I loved your honesty. Oh, yeah. I went on a tangent there. I loved it. Yeah. Um, yeah. June Sherwood. June Sherwood. <laughs> June's my car's name. Oh, okay. Yeah. No relation. Yeah. And I don't have a thing with months by any means, but I just like the sound of it. Yeah. That's the next question. Um, the Gregorian calendar. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We'll something else here. Yeah. <laughs> we got some other goodies. A potential new job requires a drug test, which I won't pass right now as they've been smoking pot every day for the past 15 years. What options do I have? <laughs> you can you can get stuff that you can pass drug tests with. There's like things oh, yeah? you can drink. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't tell you what it is though, but you can Google it. But you have to like take this like pill or powder or whatever like an hour before and drink a bunch of water and then not pee but mm. you don't want to risk it you know yeah well i mean I like how long do they have i like the idea of like you peeing in a cup for me 
and me oh, smuggling it. Yeah. I like that idea. Well, I mean, you know, how much do they, how they, much pro- do they want the job? They probably pat you down or something, right? Well, it depends on how serious it is. Yeah. It's First of all, drug tests for jobs are the dumbest fucking thing ever, dude. Like, depends on what the job is. Yeah. I guess if you're a surgeon. Or oh, what something. the drug is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, who gives a shit what I do off hours? If I'm, if I'm fucked up at work, just fire me, mm-hmm. you know? But if I need a little something. But it would be hard to regulate it if it was like that. You know, sometimes you have to have, with things like this, you have to have it pretty black and white. Yeah. Because it's like, well, I, I wasn't, I wasn't high. That's, that's sub- subjective. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, there's no other way other than like a drug test. And- sure, sure. Yeah, if you're, uh, yeah, what other jobs do you really need to be drug tested for though? I mean, probably a lot. A lot that we don't even realize. I mean, there's a lot of jobs, there's a lot of like occupations out there that I knew if they could smoke weed or have it in their system or something well. I mean, I know how I am when I'm high. <laughs> and that enough for me you is to You ain't getting skip. any jobs done. <laughs> no, no, no. I can't drive heavy machinery. <laughs> no forklifts. I can't do anything. Future. No, I <laughs> forklift certified. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't be forklift certified. <laughs> if I wish I was. You're not? No. Oh, that's a bummer. I know. Yeah. I can't believe you... Just disclose that. It's immortalized. I, I just lost a lot of potential women in my DMs. I'm just saying that one. Honesty is the most important thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I uh, When I was in high school, I would get drug tested all the time because I was growing my hair out. It was a Catholic high school, and I just looked like a fucking hippie, but I wasn't doing any drugs at all in high school. And they would cut out a lock on my hair like every month. Really? And they would test my hair. You, you not pee? No. They did. I didn't know you can even do that. And also, how could they I guess be it's allowed like a, to cut your hair? I know, right? Because it's a private school. They can do whatever the fuck they want. How much did they cut off? Was it like a big chunk? <sighs> yeah, like a chunk. Whoa. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I was pretty pissed whenever they, they would call me in to do it. I would be really angry too. That seems like illegal that they can cut your hair. They well, cut you. They cut your, they cut your person. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then... And I was like, um, you weren't supposed to have long hair and you're supposed to be like cut above your ears. It was like part of the uniform. Mm. But I just said, could, could you just cut it around your ears? I guess you could have <laughs> had the worst haircut ever and done that. I've never seen that before. That'd be such a pretty haircut. <laughs> that sounds like from the future. But but yeah, I said, fuck you. And I was just growing it pretty long. And, nice. and I think they just kept doing it to kind of like try and subordinate me a little bit. Mm. But I, it's like go didn't f- work. Didn't work. It's like all the fucking girls can have long hair. It's I'm, silly. Yeah. It's silly. So I was I didn't give a shit. Good. Yeah. And here, and here, I, here I am <laughs> with long fucking hair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. My school didn't allow us to wear yoga pants. Oh yeah. I got sent home. But it was kind of a system I learned because if I had something to do at home, then I'd wear yoga pants to school. Mm-hmm. So they send me home. So then I kind of finish up whatever like yo. I almost said yogurt. Homework. That was a weird. Ooh, yogurt pants. Yeah, <laughs> I finished that up my yogurt delicious. at home. Um, yeah, yogurt <laughs> pants. Honey. They they you ha- they, they get on everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they attract ca- all sorts of like ants. <laughs> ants, exactly. That's the yeah. The, that's the worst part. Other than that, they would have been a yeah. They would have been a hit. I was trying to make them a thing. Oh, okay. But the ants, I was like, I can't do this to humanity. <laughs> well, too, we, a lot of the girls would wear, we had khaki pants as part of our uniform, too. And, um, I hate that word. It's a such a word. bad word. Khaki. It just sounds like gross in your mouth. Yeah. Khaki I, pants? I need a drink after that. But I, <laughs> Rinse your mouth out. <laughs> but all the girls are wearing like tight khakis, you know? And I think, <laughs> and, you know, all the guys love it. Khakis. The dudes loved it, but the, I think the administration realized we liked it a bit too much, and uh, they do. They made it. They made a specific pants. Yogurt pants. Yeah, specific yogurt pants, uh, <laughs> patented by July Sherwood, and um, and everyone had to buy those specific khakis. It's expensive. Yeah, I know. The school you went to very demanding. It was demanding, dude. I fucking hate them. That's sad. Fuck school, dude. Yeah. Did, did you do well in school? Yeah, I did pretty well, admittedly. Mm. So did I. I was lucky that uh, 
I didn't study a whole lot. I re- I retained information really well. Like I would just pay attention in class and like never studied. What subject did you like the best? Um, obviously the art classes, but those don't count. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they were so easy. Like because everyone, it's like the teacher would grade everyone at like an equal. Like it was yeah, hard to fail. E- exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I liked uh. I liked history a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm kind of a history buff a little bit. Like I grew up watching a lot of History Channel, like Discovery Channel and shit. What time period? Like do you have a... I love World War II shit. Really? I love that shit too. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, World War I too. I just like war stuff. Interesting. Low key. Um, So yeah, I, I, I always did really good in history class. Cause I, cause I liked listening. I liked hearing about it, but I didn't like, they would, I was put in like all these fucking like AP like classes and shit. Um, Gosh, so and then, and they just give you so much fucking homework. And that was the mm. shit I didn't like. Like I would do it, but I would like, pr- I would half ass all, all of my homework. <laughs> and, but I, you know, I got my degree and I, I think that's one of the things like kids stress so much about their fucking grades, dude, especially in high school. For at least some some people do, but it doesn't matter as long as you get out of it. You know you're yeah. fine, dude. It doesn't fucking yeah. matter. It really doesn't matter. Even college, if you can get C's, get degrees, dude. D's, even some D's get some degrees. Really? I think so. Hmm. I could be making that up. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I don't think you can. Get, I don't uh, think. Uh, sure think. <laughs> I sure think. You didn't go to college or anything? No. Yeah, fuck college, dude. Fuck college. Well, for it's just different than it used to be. It used to be this assured thing, like an guaranteed, an affordable <laughs> thing. I'm making up a lot of words on this podcast. It used to be a <laughs> yeah. thing that you were guaranteed that you you graduated college, you would get your mm-hmm. job, you would get out of your debt, and you'd be successful. But now people are swimming in debt for like 30 years. Oh yeah. And if you want to go to art school, don't. Oh, like ha- trying to make art amidst the stress of debt is not fun. Yeah. If you want to be a painter too, it's a really hard, it's a hard road. And like so many jobs now won't hire you because you went to college. Mm-hmm. And you can get some incredible jobs in life if you just, that, what do they call it? Like entry, you, you they'll you teach. You learn on the job. You learn on the job. You start from knowing nothing. Yeah. And they were like really great. Um, occupation that you can have your entire life. It's just different than it used to be. Everything is like the past like 30 years, everything's really shifting. People yeah. can make their whole career like shooting an arrow at a target while doing a handstand, you know, because oh. of the internet. Where do I apply? <laughs> you know, just a little bit of practice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because we have the internet can, now. You can learn anything off YouTube, dude. It's true. Yeah. YouTube University. Yeah, you don't need college. You got YouTube. <laughs> people go to college just to experience the college yeah, life which i T- to fuck yeah. drink do drugs mm-hmm. be away from your fucking parents yeah have like the brotherhood the sisterhood whatever. yeah yeah i get that and it's for some people so worth it yeah yeah i mean if your reason. parents are footing that whole bill do it mm-hmm. you know get the degree I, I mean i don't i don't know it's like I, I went to a community college for my first two years. Luckily on like a degree where I didn't have to spend any money or a scholarship. Um, and it was like the smartest decision. Like I, I wish more people didn't look down on like a lot of people look at community college like you're failing in life or something. And it's oh. like, and it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like your, your first two years are just shitty gen eds anyways. And, uh, I don't know what that means. It's like general education, like classes uh, of like stupid classes. I can stop talking about college because <laughs> I fucking hate college <laughs> and I hate school. <laughs> stop. Yeah. yeah, what are you? Yeah. You, you all started when you said fucking khakis. I'm, I'm giving you the ick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm giving you a mega ick right do now. Do another question. Yeah, let's do another one. <laughs> Let me think. Here. I love all your hand tattoos. Thanks, dude. Did you go to the same artist? For my hands, I did. Uh, a dude named Devin Broderson lit them all up at once. Really? It was like a seven hour session. Oh, see, I tried to whistle right there. Just whistle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really nice. He did my whole chest too. He's a cool guy. 
it's always nice when you can find that one tattoo. I, I love different style tattoos though. Mm-hmm. All mine are black. Well, I have a teensy bit of color, but all mine are like black line work, black yeah. and gray. A lot of my other ones are from a girl in Chicago. Did a lot of mm-hmm. my work. Her name's Sarah Spread. She, she's cool. She's a badass. All of mine have been done. Oh no, I, most of mine have been done in LA, but then I had a couple. Yeah. My friend tattooed my butt, you know, those ones. <laughs> and I got a couple done in like Seattle yeah. and Idaho. I'll give you one. It's not gonna be good. Yeah. You probably get it. probably get an infection. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have hepatitis. It's a better story, you know. <laughs> yeah. This one's kinda interesting. Is it off putting for a guy to have a female best friend? No. Um, no. No. Next question. No, I'm sticking. <laughs> Let me just read the rest of it. Um, <laughs> but I agree. I'm a guy and I have a female best friend. We're quite close and I see her most days and I go to hers a couple times a week to chill and watch a few episodes of whatever we're into at the time. She stopped dating a couple of guys because they were threatened by me, which makes me feel a little bad for having a negative impact. She's like a sister to me. Is this off-putting for other women? I mean, I think it's something that if you're dating someone and their best friend is the opposite sex, if there's any sort of... I'm pressing some buttons here when I say this, but if there's any bit of insecurity within yourself, it'll be highlighted. Like all your insecurities and doubts will be illuminated with your it Depends how partner. much time they're spending together. That's true. Yeah. You know, where it's like questionable what, why, why are you spending more time with them than me? You know, if you're if, uh, saying I'm in a relationship with them, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, some, some. If they're gay, oh, spend all the time you want with them, you know? But I, I don't agree. I don't know. I think that some relationships, like one of my best friends is a man. Yeah. And, you know, some relationships just have this like timeless um, sure. type of love that there isn't anything going on. But yeah. I understand how that could be um, uncomfortable for their partners. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, if you're going over to spend a night to watch a movie together. I think it sometimes it does require a bit of um, you might have to and this is probably my own opinion, but you might have to alter your relationship a little bit with them if it's um, than what it used to be once they have a partner, yeah. because sometimes you just can't ever really explain. But a lot of times it's people that have best friends that are of the opposite sex only understand what it's like and it, you can't explain it to somebody yeah, totally. unless they also do, you know, right. And yeah, that that's the thing. It's like if you don't have that exact same relationship with someone, you can't see the that perspective. Yeah. It'd be so hard to trust. Yeah. And understand. Yeah. So your yeah. best friend isn't a girl, I assume. Yeah. I definitely have a lot of girlfriends. Um I definitely don't hang out with them to the extent that it sounds like this guy's hanging out with them. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I've always had I think growing up with sisters, I've always been able to relate pretty well with women. And like, just, I have a lot of lesbian girlfriends that I'm really close with. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's just because we can uh, just shoot the shit to a certain degree. But I don't know. I think there's, um, it's, it's just different when it's, it's two single people. Yeah. Um, that are both both the same sexuality hanging out together like often. Yeah, I can see the discomfort with it. It's you know. something that I've experienced so much in my life with like just dis- I've had discussions on this. Yeah. And it always comes down to if you don't have that relationship, you just don't fucking understand it. Right. Yeah. But it is it's tricky. It's super gray area. Yeah. And I'm still actually working working this out. Um. But I think yes, yeah, sometimes if if it's costing your if it's costing your best friend their relationship because you're so close with them and you're having sleepovers or whatever, maybe you just stop having sleepovers. You know, <laughs> don't have sleepovers if you're just don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> or, or you know, it might come down to it might it might even come down to them either breaking up. Yeah. with their partner or breaking up with you as a friend and right, it's super yeah. sad when that has to happen yeah. but like and it's their choice you know yeah, yeah. you know and maybe maybe that's it that you should just back off and uh, but i don't know this is probably an unpopular opinion and i might change my mind one day but 
Uh-huh. Um, it's like the happiness of your friend and their relationship or your happiness with them as a friend. Uh-huh. Maybe it's worth sacrificing. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you're telling your wife like, all right, honey, I'm going to sleep over at my friend's house. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, nah, nah. But I mean, all that being said, then you take into consideration, like, what if like my other best friends are women? But like, I, I'm attracted to humans and not necessarily gender. I mean, sure. they've all happened to be men. That's <laughs> just the way it's turned out. Yeah. But I'm, like, women aren't off the, I mean, I can still, I've still been attracted to women in my life. And like the fact that I have mm-hmm. girl, like girlfriends as my best friends too, no one questions that, you know? So there's, True. there's so much grayness to all this. For sure. For sure. It's all gray. I love the gray. That's my favorite color. Is it? No, I'm just kidding. What is, oh, we don't, we're not going to do the favorite color thing. I don't like that question. I don't like favorite questions. I don't have a favorite color. I don't even have a favorite croissant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, maybe almond. Oh, yeah. But favorite questions are like terrible. Favorite it's donut. Even, What's your favorite donut? Krispy Kreme. Oh, that's a wild card, dude. Really? I think so. What's yours? An apple fritter. Mm. Krispy Kreme. Those are hit or miss. They're often too dry. Maybe I'm just going too late. Uh, how dare you? Krispy Kreme. What about them? Krispy <laughs> Kreme. Uh, they made me want to throw up after one really? of them, dude. It's like too sweet. It's too much sugar. Oh, it's like it's, it's like sugar day. incarnate, dude. Oh, yeah. I think they take all the sugar and they just somehow make it work. It's hard to make that much sugar work. There's a Krispy Kreme like building, store, restaurant, like right down the street. Really? It's the only one I've ever seen in my life. I've never gone in it because I don't. I don't want to buy anything. You don't want to gag? No, I don't want to gag. I just walk in there and start the vomiting. But, <laughs> but, but, but it's like, who's going in there to keep consistently to keep this whole store in business? Someone is. Stepfather's going to see their kids that they haven't seen in a month. Oh, get like yeah, a whole showing thing up with a dozen, yeah. <laughs> wow, that was, <laughs> like, I like that. <laughs> Nice one. No, I mean, I I think people that want to treat themselves or people that hate themselves. Yeah. Which is yeah interesting. I feel like I put on 10 pounds after I have one of those. I get on like sugar waves. Like I'm yeah. really a so sugar freak. Me too. I have a sweet tooth. Yeah. And I got to watch it. Like yeah. I'm, I most of the time kind of like try and avoid sugar because I just, once I have right. a little bit, then it's like, oh. mm-hmm. <laughs> And then I, it's all I want. Yeah. When I grocery shop, I don't buy any snacks. I don't That's have, good. I don't have any snacks in my house ever. Yeah. I'm usually pretty damn clean. I'm like, I try and just stay like, and I eat say, everything that's alive. And I say that as if I didn't eat like a whole like Danish like last week. Danish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've heard anyone say Danish. It's so long. <laughs> like a cheese Danish. No. I had a whole Danish. Uh, like a whole rack, you know, like a like a slab of Danish. <laughs> wow. I, I had eat in one sitting. Like, you know. Oh, that's a little better. Yeah. I I that's another thing though. I can't like nibble. You know, people have like yeah. half a chocolate bar. I like a lot. Yeah, I just go chocolate covered almonds, dude. I fucking mm. eat. That's mm. another thing I'll eat till I throw up. Yeah. Just one of those things. So, I mean, I'm sensing a trend here. Do you like the throwing up part? <laughs> yeah. Because it's, happened, kind of it's come up twice line, now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just like, Oh, that's going to make me throw up. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I walk through the grocery aisle just like... Hmm, Gag a little some bit. Some Scooby-Doo snacks. Yum. I'll yeah. take some of those. Um, so, do you have any, like, galleries or anything, like, coming up that you want to oh, promote, dude? I have nothing to promote. <laughs> I have absolutely nothing. Not even well, yourself? <laughs> What's your, um, what's your IG handle? Oh, yeah. Art of July. Look at the camera. <laughs> Art dot of dot July. That's I me. need like three more camera angles for you. Yeah. So, you, so I could tell you. <laughs> yeah. Could add it between all of them. <laughs> yeah. I I don't have any any events and I would I'm kind of feel bad that I might be forgetting something. But I have some art up in Santa Fe. Oh, yeah. At Fahrenheit Gallery. You have, a, you have an online People? store? I do. Artofjuly.com. I mean, I have my some prints on there. Sweet. Artofjuly.com. It used to be dot .dance. Again, what? it confused people. It was just available. I'm like, how cool is that? Yeah. But then people obviously thought I was a dancer. The dance of July? Artofjuly.dance is oh. what I bought. And then it just, again, it, it 
aroused so I've never many questions. Dot dance? Yeah, you, you like, can do dot like anything. Really? Just about yeah. I didn't know that. You can just buy, yeah. What is the com for? Do you know that? Dot com? What does that stand for? I'm, you're probably, I'm probably asking the wrong person. You are, but, but I might <laughs> I'm digging. <laughs> Please dig. I I um, never thought about that right till right now. Neither have I. I don't know, it stands for something. Can, it's so funny with podcasts uh, people listen they're like i know what it is and they're screaming <laughs> it in their yeah. car <laughs> i hope someone's listening someone uh, listening <laughs> if you're listening blink twice <laughs> don't blink because this podcast is over um well thank you july or emily i'm sorry uh, july you're gonna confuse everyone see now now this is happening the confusion yeah. that's why i I'll keep it one emily.dance.com emily.dance <laughs> Uh, Thank you, Tyler, <laughs> Paul, Freddie, <laughs> yeah. John, Michael, Vincent. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Peace out, y'all.